Ok, can we start? Great, so when, when you want to. Okay. It's fine, yeah. Thank you. Ok, let's start. Uh, welcome to the Wednesday session of the workshop of Fruits and PD. The first speaker of the day is Gianluca Kripa from University of Basel. And he's going to talk about an elementary proof of existing and in English for the Euler flows in an informal localized two-dimensional space. Thanks a lot. I'm very grateful for, for the invitation. So it's just a pity that uh, we cannot hold uh, yeah, this, uh, this meeting in person. So I hope we will have chances in the future. So I'm going to talk about an elementary proof of existence and uniqueness for the Euler flow inside this uh, uniformly localized Udovich spaces. And uh, this, uh, this is based on a joint work with the postdoc here in Basel, so George Stephanie. So let me start, uh, you know, by, by something which is, which is quite well known in this community. So I, I hope you see my pointer. So I'm very sorry I had problems in connecting my iPad. So I'm doing this little, you know, not, 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 not great version in which I just uh, point on my PDF. Um, uh, but I hope you see my, my, my pointer from the mouse so I can, uh, yes, I can, can uh, very great. So, okay, so we are going to, um, to discuss some results about the Euler equations, so which I recall for you. So V is the velocity of our fluid, which is assumed to be incompressible, so divergence of V equal to zero. And the Euler equations are this partial differential equation here. So the TV plus V dot grad of V equal to minus gradient of the pressure. So V is the velocity, P is the pressure. In the special two-dimensional case, so these equations can be uh, specialized to this uh, vorticity form. So in 2D, the vorticity is, uh, is a scalar, which are defined to be the rotational, so the curl of the, of the velocity at each time. And uh, so the special thing of 2D, which is like the, the, the main, uh, so the main benefit uh, in a sense of working in 2D, in is the fact that vorticity is simply advected, so which results in this first equation, so the T omega plus V dot grad grad omega equal to zero. So you have no stretching on, on the right hand side. Uh, of course, you are not just, uh, you know, hiding too much under the carpet, under the rug, and so all the difficulties of your problem. So the equation is still complicated, it's still a nonlinear and non-local because you recover the velocity via the bio savar law from the velocity itself. So, okay, so it's not an advection with a given velocity. And in this talk, okay, we'll focus on uh, uniqueness and non-uniqueness uh, issues uh, under assumptions on the, on the vorticity omega. So I will mostly focus in fact for the, the, the new results about, uh, about uniqueness. So the classical results of uniqueness for this equation in uh, integrability classes for the vorticities are um, basically the first result was due to uh, Udovich, which uh, uh, established uniqueness for uh, uniformly in time bounded in space uh, vorticities, so L infinity, or as I will describe in a while, under mild growth of the LP norm of the, of the vorticity. And this was followed some year later by a, so Quite technically quite complicated work by, uh, by Vishik, uh, in which he basically established uh, a uniqueness for some sort of BMO-like vorticities. Uh, so it becomes a bit, bit, bit more complicated. And uh, so Vishik's paper is quite complicated, not just for the tools and the techniques, uh, but also because, um, uh, so this is not an existence and uniqueness space. Uh, so it requires stronger conditions for, for existence. And this open, say, a whole, uh, area of research in which one tries to, to balance in a certain sense, the condition on the initial data that one needs in order to establish existence and uniqueness in classes which are larger than the Newtovich-like classes. And here like key names are Bernico and, uh, and, and collaborators. Okay, I can give you references if you are interested in that. So non-uniqueness is a very challenging question in this setting, so here I am not speaking about uh, all, all the recent and very important progress on uh, say around the Dion Sager conjecture, but I am restricting to this very special case on of uh, integrability bounds on the, on the vorticity. So quite recently, so Vishik gave some results about the non-uniqueness for this equation with uh, uh, LP vorticity, P less than infinity, but, uh, and he exploits that quite strongly in his, uh, in his papers, uh, 
with forcing, so with forcing in the corresponding uh, uh, integrability space. On the other hand, so Bressan and collaborators uh, gave what, uh, you know, are in a certain sense, some first steps in a sort of computer assisted uh, proof uh, of, of non uniqueness for, for, for the way I say it. So in which some steps in the proof are basically sort of numerical steps. And quite recently, so some week ago, so um, Brue and Colombo, so they could prove uh, um, uniqueness via convex integration techniques uh, for uh, vorticities in these weak L1 spaces and in other Lorentz spaces. So these are not really spaces. I mean, this is weaker than L1, so it's more general than, than, than L1. And they could prove existence of multiple of infinitely many solutions in velocity formulation. Uh, Satisfying, nevertheless, the constraint that develop, the vorticity is uniform in time in this type of weak, uh, weak Lebesgue spaces. But let me stick because uh, uh, that's what uh, that's what I'm going to present as original results uh, to the positive part, so to the uniqueness. And now we'll make a small recap, uh, so a description of what the Udovic does. Uh, in fact, in two papers. Uh, so his strategy for uniqueness, for the uniqueness, is based on uh, estimates for the relative energy. So the relative energy being the following quantity. So the, uh, the square of the L2 norm of the difference between two solutions. So V1 and V2 are two solutions of the, of the PDE. Then he proceeds in the following way. So I consider two solutions, V1 and V2. They are both divergent zero and with two uh, corresponding pressures, P1 and P2. You do an energy estimate. So you make just take the difference of the two equations. You make an energy estimate multiplying times V1 minus V2. And then you get the following. So you get that the time derivative of the energy, which comes because here uh, there, is, there is a partial derivative in time. Of the, of the relative energy, you can bound in the following way with the gradient, with the integral in space of the gradient of one of the two velocities times the difference squared of the two velocities. So if we had the gradient of V1 in L infinity, so if the velocity V1 would be Lipschitz, then we would be immediately in the position to apply a gromwell like lemma. But we cannot because, uh, well, this is again well known because the velocity, so the gradient of the velocity is given by uh, a singular integral. So an operator, on, a convolution operator, but of Calderon Sigmund type with the vorticity, for which the following happens. So the LP norms are, the LP norms of the gradient of the velocity are controlled by the LP norms of the vorticity for every p less than infinity, strictly greater than one and strictly less than, than infinity. This estimate does not hold for p equal to infinity. You see that because you can track quantitatively and that's important for, for the proof, which I'll describe in a moment, uh, the constant in the calderon simon inequality and this blows up, this grows like p for p large. Okay? Then in a sense, you have a bound for all p, but with a constant which grows. Okay? In particular, and that's another way if you want to reformulate this, so the fact that you have a sort of a borderline bound which fails for, for p equal to infinity, the velocity is not Lipschitz, so you, you don't just have this control linear in the incre increment, but you have this sort of logarithmic, uh, logarithmic uh, uh, factor in this quasi-Lipschitz inequality. Okay, how does, based on this, Udovic uh, close this uh, Gromwell-like estimate that you would like to close if, uh, you would have closed if uh, the, the gradient of V would have been bounded. So he plays a, a game which is, which is quite nice in fact. So you remember we were at this point. So we now in a certain sense split this V1 minus V2 square. So we put a bit of an infinity norm of it. And then we estimate via cauchy schwartz in LP, LP prime. And we get the following. So we just estimate the gradient of V1 in LP. This quantity here will basically reconstruct a relative energy between the two solutions. And then we, we have an L infinity part, which is just estimated because the vorticities are at least in L2 and then the velocities are, are bounded, okay? So this for P greater than two is just bounded by, by a constant because again, the velocities are bounded. And then one arrives, so Udovic arrives to an inequality of this type which uh, for fixed P does not allow for, for a news of uh, the Gromwell inequality because here we have an exponent which is less than one. 
but one can play a smarter trick, which in my opinion is very nice. So we can consider the maximal solution of this equality, of this inequality, or of the differential, uh, of the differential equation. And then in a sense, the fact that we have P here in front, which comes from the quantitative control on the constant in calderon simon inequalities, uh, it allows to write uh, the maximal solution, which has, which has this form. And now we observe that uh, if you just look at small times, so times smaller than one over to C, this quantity here is less than one alpha, we can let P to infinity, and then we get zero for the maximal solution. So it's a way of, in a certain sense, uh, uh, Considering, uh, considering a family of, uh, of differential inequality, which are almost as good with a quantitative, uh, in a quantitative way, and then uh, their limit in a certain sense. Uh, so the limit inequality that you would get if P, P would be allowed to be taken to equal to plus infinity. So this sort of limit case uh, via this maximal solution argument uh, gives, uh, gives the result. There is a very nice variation, which is done uh, again by Yudovich in, in a follow-up paper some years, some years later, in which it does not require the vorticity to be in L infinity, but in LP, um, in every LP, in such a way that the LP norm as a function of P grows in principle as a function uh, uh, capital theta of, of P with some moderate growth, which will become apparent in, in a while what I mean with moderate growth, although in a slightly implicit way. So this works in the same way. So it starts with the same a priori, so the same estimate for the uh, relative energy, but then we do a computation which is just slightly different. So here I estimate for a given epsilon greater than zero, I estimate the gradient of velocity in L one over epsilon, and then do again the same the same trick. So I put a bit of the difference of the two velocities in L, in L infinity. That part is just fine because they are they are again L infinity, and they estimate this other quantity difference to the two times one minus epsilon in L one over one minus epsilon, and then I get this inequality here. Okay, I remember that my assumption is that the um, here I am already using the fact that the L one over epsilon norm of the velocity is estimated for epsilon small by one over epsilon, the L one over epsilon norm of the vorticity. Again, is uh, the, the quantitative constant in calderon Sigmund. And then I just put everything together. So I remember that I am assuming some growth condition of, of this type on the LP norms of the, of the vorticity, which is what I codify here. Okay, so the norm of omega and L one over epsilon is like theta of one over epsilon bounded by that times times a constant. And then I get this form. I get this right hand side, which I can optimize in epsilon. Okay, optimizing in epsilon amounts to defining some function psi of z to use Udovich notation, which is the inf over epsilon of whatever on the right hand side you have, which depends on epsilon. And then once you have this function here, you can write now a differential inequality for the relative energy of this type. We can conclude at this point with a slightly different argument, so not any longer by looking at the maximal solution, but uh, observing that, that this differential inequality starts with the initial value uh, energy at initial time equal to zero. So if the right hand side satisfies an Osgood condition, which has this form, which basically tells that uh, uh, in order to exit uh, from the uh, from the value zero, it takes infinite time. So that's the meaning of this left hand side. And here is just a change of variable. That's just an equivalent formulation by changing variable. Uh, this should be plus infinity. So this this is nice. This is a slightly implicit condition. Okay, on the function psi. Remember the function psi is this inf of objects containing the function theta which is related to the growth of the LP norms of the, of the, uh, of the vorticity. Per se is implicit, so the uniqueness condition becomes a de function psi construct in this way satisfies this Osgood-like condition. There are typical examples in which you can, uh, you know, kind of check whether this holds or not. And the two typical cases are uh, if omega, say at the origin as a log singularity or a log log singularity, in the first case, the theta function becomes like P, the LP norms close linearly, 
In the second case, you have a milder singularity and the LP norms grow like logarithmically. And this, you do all your computations. And then you discover that the psi function in the two cases is either a log, which is not fine for Osgood. So this integral would converge. Or in the second case, the psi is like log log of set for set large, in which case you get the Osgood condition. Moral of the story is that Yudovich uh, uh, Yudovich results gives uniqueness for vorticities with the log log blow up at the point, but not for vorticities with the log blow up at the point. Okay. So uh, remember, so remark that uh, uh, the uh, a blow up like a log is the typical BMO singularity, and that's why it's relevant to see also Vishik's paper in this context because it can deal with. Uh, uh, with BMO, BMO vorticities. So that's a, you know, a kind of you know, a very, very fast uh, review of Yudovic proof or proofs. Let me make two observations, which in a certain sense uh, open the way for, for the description of, of my result with Giorgio. So the two remarks are the following. So first of all, Yudovic proofs make a substantial use of, of a tool, which is calderon Zygmunt theory, in particular, uh, the quantification of the constants. Second, that true, it offers a condition uh, uh, for, for uniqueness, uh, but this condition is sort of implicit. Uh, so is on this function psi, which is defined by, 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 this, uh, by the, this infimization problem uh, of something which contains uh, the growth function for the vorticities in, in LP. Then you can check it on some cases, but it's still a sort of an implicit condition if you have a very general function, function theta. So what do we do? So in our result, so with Giorgio Stefani, we do the following. So we do a completely elementary approach as it was you know, advertising in the title. So we don't use calderon Zygmunt theory at all. And we do something which you know we find aesthetically quite quite nice. So we don't even use any uh, tool from Sobole spaces. So we don't even mention in our paper uh, Sobole spaces, if not to mention that we don't mention them. So we mention them in certain sense. So we have a sort of fully metric approach. So we don't really rely. Now we specify that better. So we don't really rely on the say um, differential or structural properties of the of the um, because of a kernel, but only on some metric properties of these kernels uh, will become more clear. So the uniqueness condition on the function theta, so the condition that theta must satisfy in order to give uniqueness, uh, so they are much more explicit and simple. And also in a very natural way, we can deal uh, not just with this uh, global Udovic spaces with these global bounds on the vorticity, but also in what we'll define in a while in the so-called uh, uniformly localized Udovic spaces, which were already present uh, in, in the literature on, on, on the topic, but not directly uh, used by, by Udovic to the best of our knowledge. So these spaces are done in the following way. So you remember that these Udovic spaces, they depend on a function big theta, which tells how fast the norms are growing as, as a function of p. So they were, they were defined with global LP norms. Now we define the uniformly localized version of the spaces by uniformly localized LP norms, okay? where these uniformly localized LP norms of a function means the following, take the LP norm of a ball of radius one, okay? so finite radius, which we fix, and then take the supremum when you move the center of the ball. So like the, the largest, LP norm of a function on a ball of given radius when you move the point. So in this sense, they are localized, but they're not localized in the sense of the LP lock. So they are uniformly localized. So the balls are of radius one, okay? So the size of the ball does not, does not change. These spaces are known in the literature. I will cite close to the end some papers by Tanuki and other authors. So these this, this spaces have been already, already used in the literature. So our main lemma, which basically is the lemma which opens the door for all the uh, all our all our results, uh, is the following: we are able uh, with the, with an elementary computation, if you want, uh, to provide an explicit modulus of continuity for the velocity associated to vorticities uh, belonging uh, to this uniformly localized 
of each classes. And the statement works in the following way. So I have a, a modus of continuity, which I call phi. It will depend on the function, on the growth function theta. So the velocity, so the increment of the velocity can be estimated with this phi theta of the increment, x minus y. In the following way, so the, the modus of continuity, say for small values of the variable uh, is given by the following, the following expression. So R times again, the logarithmic, uh, the logarithmic factor, which, is, which was already there in case of L infinity vorticities, uh, times uh, another factor, which is given by this growth function theta computed at one minus the log of the, the log of the increment. Okay, this is for small values of r, r small that go e to the minus two, something like that, whatever. And v is bounded, okay? So we don't really care what happens for, for large increments, okay? It's important what happens for, for small increments. Okay, so this is our main lemma in a sense. I'll make now some remarks on that. And they do the full proof apart from, you know, being a bit fast in some computations, just to tell you that it's, it's really an elementary one. So again, so we are giving a fully explicit modulus of continuity for the velocity, depending on the growth of the uniformly localized LP norms of the uh, vorticity to which the velocity is associated. So remarks, so if again, the vorticity is bounded, this means the LP norms uniformly localized, that they are not really growing with respect to P, so this theta is bounded by a constant, and then our modulus of continuity does what it, it, it must do. So it's again a log Lipschitz modulus of continuity. Okay. So this, in a sense, is a perturbation. Okay. This theta of one minus log of r is a perturbation due to the um, uh, to the growth of the LP norms. So the second computation is that uh, uh, some related computation, which quite quite similar in spirit in a sense, and in, in the very low amount of technology which used, are present in some paper by Evelyn Mio uh, concerning the Vlasov-Poisson equation. Uh, so you, there's a similar structure. You can do some similar computation for the modulus of continuity. However, so it's explicitly marked in the paper that. Uh, um, so their, their proof of uniqueness for Vlasov-Poisson relies strongly on the kinetic structure. So in this uh, split structure of the Vlasov-Poisson equation in uh, uh, space and velocity variables. So it's a kinetic equation. And uh, that, uh, that uniqueness cannot be pushed uh, uh, with their argument uh, to, the, uh, to, the, to the Euler equation. So this they remark explicitly at several points uh, in, in these papers. Uh, and the other remark, which I was mentioning, so this sort of metric or more general approach, is that we do not really rely on the exact form of the Biosava kernel, but only on the fact that the rule, so the law, which given the vorticity gives to you the velocity, is an integral expression of this form. Okay, I integrate omega y against the kernel k of x y. There is a small k, actually, the k, where k just need to satisfy two estimates, which are satisfied by the Biosava kernel in the plane or on the torus or in nice open sets, which is the way it blows up when the two points X and Y uh, become close to one, one to the other, K, X, Y is controlled like one over X minus Y. And this sort of, you know, Lipschitz property of the kernel in the first variable away from the singularity, Kxy minus Kx bar y is controlled by x minus y divided by uh, x minus y, x bar minus y. Okay, so from uh, the something which blows up when we uh, when we will go close to the singularities. So these are the two properties that we are using in order to derive our to derive our estimates. So not the precise form. And again, the proof is very is very simple. So the proof is, if you want an explicit estimate, which I will, will fully do now, so call D the distance between the two points. We are estimating now the velocity at X minus the velocity at Y, K omega X minus K omega Y. This is given by some integral expression. So by this convolution-like expression, which I estimate putting inside the, the moduli. 
And then I split in, uh, so the, the integral in three different uh, regimes. So here I'm integrating again the same function, which I have here. I integrate either outside of the ball of radius two around the point, uh, the point X, pick one of the two points, uh, or um, inside the ball, so not very far from X, but still uh, at the distance uh, from, from X, which is like twice the distance uh, to the point Y, okay? So sort of intermediate scale, plus uh, for terms, uh, the points set, uh, which are closer than twice the distance between X and Y to the point X. So three different regimes, and I do three different estimates in, uh, in those three regimes. So in the first one, I use the, uh, this sort of Lipschitz regularity for the kernel with this blow up. Okay? So this here would give me like this X minus Y, and then I have still omega Z divided by this uh, X minus Y, Y minus Z, which I integrate in the Z. But here I, using, I use the fact that I am away from the singularity at the point X, okay? So I am far from X, so uh, Z is far from X. Then Y, since uh, the distance between X and Y is less than one, Y is also far from the singularity. And then this gives me like the simple piece in which I basically just need the decay at infinity for a fixed Q of the vorticity, okay? And here is a piece which I need a, a global information of vorticity. Okay, so a global LQ bound for Q smaller than two. Second piece, so this sort of intermediate uh, intermediate range. So I integrate in this set between, in the set between, uh, um, so in the ball B2X, but outside of the ball B2DX. And then again, I use this Lipschitz continuity. I have this quantity here, which is the same as above. And now I use the fact that uh, uh, in my domain of integration, y minus z is comparable to x minus z. And then I get this estimate here. Okay, that's, that's one object which I just leave here for a little bit. I tackle the third one. The third one is inside the ball centered x with radius to be. And here I have, uh, I use this estimate here. So I just don't take advantage of the, difference, which I have here. And then I just use the control blow up of the kernel when I am close to the singularity, okay? And here I move the center for, for the next computation. I move the center of the ball from X to Y and I increase a bit the radius, okay? Not a tragic, uh, not a dramatic difference. Which means, okay, so this third term here was already fine. So I have two other objects which I want to control in a way which gives me some modules of continuity, okay? So some, uh, some function of the distance only between the two points or of D, which is just the same thing. I have these two functions, so I call them alpha of D, which is the supinex of this quantity here, which I get from this middle term. And the beta of D, which is just you know the largest of these two objects here, so the integral uh, uh, on the ball of radius three D around the point uh, uh, around the point Y of this quantity here. So here I have a square. I am not close to the singularity. Here I have power one at the denominator, and I am closer to the singularity. So I'll treat the, the two integrals uh, in slightly different ways. The first one I. Well, I mean, these two ways, they are not very different, so they are slightly different for what they produce. So the first one gives the following. So I apply uh, again Cauchy-Schwarz. So I put LP on omega and uh, LP prime on the, uh, on the kernel, if you want, on the denominator, which I just, you know, then compute explicitly in polar coordinates. It gives me this number here. So it just gives me P D to the minus two over P. That's just an explicit computation. And uh, here I have the soup of X of this localized LP norms of the vorticity, which I just keep for the moment, okay? So these are these uh, uh, LP norms on ball of radius one when you, know, you move the center. And they do a very similar computation for the beta quantity. So the beta quantity, again, I put, uh, I consider the LP norm of omega and the LP prime norm of one over X minus Z on this ball here. So it's in, in polar coordinates. 
And then I get something which uh, you know has a similar has a similar structure in a sense. Therefore, all in all, at this point, I get the following. So until now, I only need to assume the, the vorticity to be in LP uniformly localized, and then I get this type of uh, this type of bound here. So here I have constants depending on p, constants depending on the vorticity, p x minus one x minus y to the one minus two over p. Which, I, which is something that should not surprise too much because this means that I got one minus two over P holder contiguity, which is exactly what is given by the uh, Mori estimates if uh, I knew that the velocity is in W1P, which I know if the velocity, if the vorticity is, is, in, uh, is in LP and uh, I use the standard Biosava kernel and I use the uh, elliptic regularity, okay? Here, basically, we are doing a computation giving the same behavior in terms of uh, Hölder continuity based only on the blow up properties of our, of our kernels, but not on, say, cancellation properties of the, of the kernels. So until now, it's not yet the modulus of continuity estimate, which I announced at the beginning. But remember that uh, now I am only using this for, I, am, I derive this for, for a fixed P larger than, larger than two. In order to conclude, pick special value of p, one minus the log of the distance between the two points. You insert this in this, uh, in this bound here, okay? And then you discover the following. So there are many pieces which should go at the right place. So this LP UL norms of the vorticity, they are bounded by the norm in uh, uh, Udovic theta UL times theta of p, okay? Which is something that, that, that I have here. So this norm here is like the constant, exactly the constant that you put in, in front of this uh, uh, theta of p in order to have the bounds for the LP norm. So it's like the uh, sup of the LP uniformly localized norm divided by, by theta p, sup over p. So p, so the p which I had here, I just keep for a while, this x minus y to the one minus two over p, I just uh, for the computation unpack in x minus y, x minus y to the minus two over p. Um, and now I insert p to be, so I pick p to be one minus log of the distance. Okay, here I have this, so okay, this is larger than one, I take it outside, theta of one minus the log, p, now one becomes one minus log, x minus y stays, so you have a linear part to my increment, so this, uh, these pieces here, I'm going around them with the, with, with the cursor. So these are the pieces which I have uh, in, in the estimate I announced. And this piece here is like a constant, okay? So X minus Y to the minus two over the log. So this is just a constant by a direct computation, okay? So you see, this is a totally elementary proof in which we just do integrals in, in the space variable. So there is no Calderon Sigmund. There is no Sobolev, we had a Sobolev-like result, meaning uh, so what, uh, what I, we would get by the Mori estimate if we would have uh, exploited the, uh, the Mori regularity. So let me observe another thing at this level. So we have done this computation just for a very general theta. So we expect uh, for uniqueness from Udovic theory and from the counter examples that now, now that are almost on the market, that conditions on theta on the growth function uh, should be required, should, should be needed in order to have uniqueness. We see that in a moment, but we need basically no conditions on theta uh, for the, uh, for, for, for in order to establish a modulus of continuity, okay? On the other hand, yes, I am calling that modulus of continuity, but um, you know, let me just go up to that. Um, um, oh, it's very much up. This quantity here, so if theta grows very fast uh, in its variable, so this quantity here does not need to be small when R is small, okay? So if theta grows like a double exponential, this is not really a modulus of continuity, okay? It's an estimate which is valid, but is not a modulus of continuity unless theta is sufficiently uh, moderately growing at infinity that this, this, this uh, phi theta of R is continuous at zero with value zero at zero, okay? 
So it's in a sense, an ex in general, an extended modulus of continuity, which is what I remark here. And adding uh, more assumptions, uh, we can uh, uh, use this, this, this quantitative bound on the modulus of continuity in order to show uniqueness. The assumptions that we need are the following. So while well, one should not surprise you too much, uh, is, this, uh, is the Osgood the continuity of the uh, modulus of continuity, which uh, while well, it's again a little in the spirit, uh, if you look well, of both uh, these uh, papers by, by Udovic and Vishik. So in a certain sense, uh, so the real meaning of that is still slightly, slightly unclear to me, but there is a, there is a sort of a link uh, between uh, having a velocity field for which uh, once you look at the linear equation uh, or once you look at the ODE, you have pointwise uh, uniqueness for every initial condition. So you are in this Osgood uh, continuity regime uh, and the uniqueness of diffused solutions uh, to the uh, nonlinear, uh, non-local problem. So these two things, they go sort of hand in hand in a certain sense. Uh, Although you don't don't really see a correlation between them in the proof, so they just uh, you know happen to be there at uh, at uh, you know in 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 the so in, in the same in the same way for uh, for two different uh, for two different reasons. And the second assumption is that we need you know that's more of a technical so the concavity of these modules of continuity. So under these two assumptions, so let me make a summary. So the theorem sounds in the following way. So assume that uh, uh, you, um, have, uh, you have uh, solutions to the Euler equation such that the vorticity is in every LP. The LP norm uh, grows like uh, a function theta of P. You produce uh, from the previous lemma, the models of continuity phi of theta. And you assume that this models of continuity is as good and, and uh, concave, then we have uniqueness of solutions uh, inside this class, okay, of solution which for which we assume some global control in L1. And now we, in, in, uh, in a follow-up work, we are planning to understand what happens in, uh, in uh, you know, in a surfati-like uh, way uh, with the surfati-like technique, most likely. So if one removes uh, this, uh, this global L1 control uh, and uh, in this uh, Udovic uniformly localized uh, class. So let me make a few remarks. Maybe I start from the remark here below, the arrow comes in a while. So the conditions on theta, now they are more explicit. So if you give me a function theta, you can produce these models of continuity, which is just some function, you can check uh, it's uh, also continuity. So in terms of growth, uh, you know, the type of examples uh, you can, uh, you can which you can explicitly do some computations, uh, they are comparable to Udovic, uh, to, Udo, to examples from the Udovic papers. So we are not uh, uh, increasing, uh, in a sense, the class uh, of vorticities uh, for which uh, uh, for which uniqueness holds. Uh, okay, this must be fair and safe. Uh, but again, so the check which specific growths are allowed becomes more and more explicit. And here I have this Lagrangian, which is here a little you know between parentheses. So the point is that we have uh, a Lagrangian proof of uniqueness. So we are not performing a proof via uh, an estimate for the uh, relative energy. We are doing a Lagrangian or you know, like a Wasserstein like, uh, like proof. The point is the following. So if you are in the context of the um, usual uh, uh, Euler equation, K is the Biosava kernel, you know that the velocity is also Sobolev. And then uh, for P larger than two, all uh, weak solutions are also Lagrangian solutions. So in principle, uh, so in that in, 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 in the canonical say case of Biosavar, you also prove the uniqueness of weak solutions. So here, if we deal with more general kernels, we are not allowed to use the Bernalion's theory because well, we don't know whether we have a Sobolev, a Sobolev regularity in our setting. So we can take two approaches. So we either just prove uniqueness of Lagrangian solutions, or we try and find a way to have a principle like uh, if I have a weak solution for my, my uh, partial differential equation, 
So a weak solution advected by a velocity which is Osgood, then uh, this weak solution of the PDE is also a Lagrangian solution, so it's transported by a flow. So this holds uh, in general under Osgood assumptions in the velocity, but it's not at all trivial. So the, there are so this is implied by some results in the literature. So there are at least three different approaches. So one is by uh, Ambrosian Bernard which uses uh, tools from the theory of currents. The other one is by uh, Klopp and collaborator, and they use, again, quite a bit of harmonic analysis. And the other one is, uh, well, it uses, you know, kind of less, uh, you know, less, less big uh, techniques, in a sense, uh, is an approach which I use at some point with, uh, with Laura Caravani in another paper, but again, it relies on a complicated kind of metric spaces construction, which took like uh, 30 pages. So if you don't have Sobolev regularity for the velocity, this, uh, you know, going from, from Lagrangian to weak solution is still kind of non-elementary. Non so what you like, you know, we have three theorems that are, you know, for us, they're not very different, but uh, let me just tell you uh, what is the, the, Lagrangian, the Lagrangian version. Uh? So the idea, if you want, uh, and now I'll present not all of the data of the computations because I guess I'm also now quite quite close to, to the end. Uh, um, uh, but uh, so the idea is that uh, you do more or less uh, like uh, a picard lindelof uh, I mean, a Lagrangian iteration uh, in a situation uh, in which, uh, well, the, the velocity is, is not given, so you have this nonlinear coupling. Uh, uh, but you have uniform Osgood bounds, okay? So it's a little bit like redoing uh, in, in the, the way I view this, 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 this lemma or this theorem at least, uh, it's a little bit like redoing a picker lindel of iteration uh, uh, in a nonlinear setting uh, under uh, Osgood bounds uh, on, the, on the velocity. So this, uh, you know, if you know the proof uh, of the Udovich theorem that you find, for instance, in the book by Marchiore and Pulvirenti, so that's, uh, quite similar to that. So there are, okay, there are some technicalities which here I'm just again uh, hiding under, under the rug. So the point is that uh, if you are not in a bounded set, uh, so you have to, you know, to have some suitable cutoff. I mean, the proof becomes a bit more intricate in a sense, but the idea is, uh, you know, is Lagrangian in the following sense. So you measure the distance between, uh, say that you have two solutions uh, with velocities, V and V tilde, so they have associated vorticities omega, omega tilde. They are both uh, in L1 and uh, in the uniformly localized Yudovich class uh, um, with a function theta, which gives a, a, an Osgood modulus of continuity. They are Lagrangian, so they have some flows, uh, X, uh, X tilde. Then uh, I start computing, uh, the sense it's a Lagrangian proof, uh, some uh, suitable, some difference between, some distance between these two flows, okay? Um, I don't have many ideas how to do that other than uh, using the ODE and estimating this with the time integral of the difference V at the first flow minus V tilde at the flow X tilde. And then again, I split this difference. So I, 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 I add and subtract V X tilde. Here in the first term, I have something which since I uh, have an estimate on the modulus of continuity of V, I can re-estimate in this way, phi theta uh, of the difference between the two flows. And the second term, I have to work a little bit more. So the advantage is that this is at the same point, uh, I have to estimate nevertheless the difference between the two velocities, V and V tilde. And uh, while well, this is something which is then very convenient to reintegrate uh, in, uh, in space. So this quantity here I will not estimate really point-wise, but integrated in space against the, the vorticity, um, uh, which uh, amounts to doing the following. So Vx tilde minus V tilde x tilde. So I write this uh, in terms of my, my kernel, Kx tilde y, omega at y, k x tilde y omega tilde at y. Okay, so that's why I have here, because here you have the v tilde, okay, which are construct the omega tilde, the v, which comes from the omega, and they are at x tilde, x tilde, x tilde. 
So here, everything at the left-hand side is at small x. Here I am integrating in small y. Uh, here I have k x tilde at x, x at y, k x tilde at x, x tilde at y, because I did some change of variable from the omega tilde backward along x, sorry, from the omega along the flow x, from the omega tilde along the flow x tilde. And then I use basically again uh, the modulus of continuity estimate I was using before. So a slightly more precise version of that in which I can deal with, uh, with moduli inside the, the integral, which tells once more that we're not using cancellations uh, in, in, our, in, our, in our thing. And then, uh, well, the, this quantity here, once I also integrate in space, uh, I can bound with this quantity, with this quantity here which again, after a couple of computations, you realize that you can bound again with the modulus of continuity uh, phi theta uh, evaluated in the distance with the two, the two flows. So all in all, putting everything together and at one place using the concavity when you have to do, you know, like uh, Jensen inequality. I mean, the Jensen inequality, but in the other direction, so you would use concavity. So you get an estimate of this type which is, so again, okay, so, I tell you, so the difference, so the integral in space of the difference of the two flows. So basically an L1 distance in space between the two flows is controlled by the time integral of the modules of continuity of the same quantity. So L1 norm of the distance between the two, between the two flows, okay, which is again, a differential inequality, which uh, from which you can conclude the uh, uh, uniqueness using the uh, Osgood, uh, because we are assuming that uh, phi theta is, is Osgood. Okay, so in a certain sense, the sort of nonlinear Lagrangian iteration uh, replaces uh, the um, uh, the the relative energy estimate of uh, of Udovic, uh, with this uh, uh, with this Lagrangian with this Lagrangian uh, with this Lagrangian computation. Uh, in which we still have some Osgood condition, okay, on the modulus of continuity. So here, the nice thing in our opinion is that here you get something which is in a sense related to a physical object in your problem, which is the velocity. Okay, I just make. I hope you have like two minutes. I just make a final remark and then I just uh, shut up. So a final remark is until now I um, uh, I described uh, I mean two, two main lemmas. So one about the, the modules of continuity and then uh, uh, and then a uniqueness uh, result in a Udovich like class. So in the same paper, we also do something else. Uh, so uh, we prove existence in uniformly uh, in uniformly localized spaces. Okay? So we prove existence so for for the for the Euler equation if the vorticity, so initial vorticity belongs either to L1 cap LP uniformly localized, P greater than two, or L1 cap Udovich uniformly localized, and we prove preservation of these of this spaces. So you start from there and then you remain in those spaces. This is somewhat related to some, some papers by, to, to a paper by uh, Taniki. I can give you more references if you, if you like. So, okay, so we have some things which are, which are stronger and some things which are weaker. So until now, we still have to assume like one global bound, which is this L1 global. On the other hand, we, so our result is uh, global and holds for, for, for any fixed P. So in terms of the, of, of, of the, uh, of the global in time result, uh, this is stronger than the new key. But again, because we, we also assume some L1, uh, L1 uh, global bound. And as a very last remark, uh, again, so you can take two approaches. So either you just deal with the other equation uh, and uh, you know that uh, for vorticities, uh, okay, how do we prove this, this theorem? So we first, uh, so we, we have an LP UL uh, vorticity, we truncate it. We establish so we have a solution because uh, um, the solution corresponds to initial vorticity in L infinity. You have a unique uh, solution in L infinity, and then we pass to the limit into that. Then you rely uh, you rely for this uh, for this uh, truncation procedure on the fact that uh, for vorticity in L one cap L infinity you have an existence theory, which relies on the fact that uh, uh, for smooth solutions you have an existence theory. 
which is known and you can use if, uh, um, uh, if you have the bios of a kernel, but uh, in the context of the more general kernels that we wanted to consider, so kernel just satisfying uh, this, uh, you know, the two properties uh, on, 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 the, on the blow up uh, and on the increments, we reproved the from, from scratch uh, via some time stepping uh, procedure and again via Ascoli, Erzela and Oben Leons like uh, Lemmas in a totally, say, classic, uh, classic flavor which for us was also sort of divertissement to, to reprove in a sense uh, some classical theories, just, uh, you know, abandoning uh, uh, tools uh, in a sense uh, and going, going back to scratch. Okay, so that's all from my side. I, I really went a bit longer and in case I apologize for that, in case not, I don't. Thank you. Thank you very much for the nice talk. Uh, okay. Uh, the question, Anna, I think, right okay. Hi. Anna, Hi, good to see you. Hello. Yes, likewise. So wonderful talk, very interesting. So I have a question. Do you think that uh, these techniques, because you don't rely on the structure of the Biosavar kernel, that they might be applicable to other active scalar equations? Yeah, I don't have examples. So the point is that, uh, yes, it's not the structure, but in a certain sense, the scaling is that. Uh, so it's uh, still a scaling. Uh, so like if you, so you wouldn't get a SQG be able... or... Okay, so... No, okay. I don't have another... Okay. Yeah, so maybe not even like this... this modeling, uh, not even this modeling between SQG and... I mean, the scaling no, is this, really... This, this, okay. Yeah, the scaling is that. The scaling is relevant. Uh, as you see also from this kind of Mori like, uh, right. can be that you know you can have coefficients. So instead of solving Laplacian equal to vorticities, Laplacian of stream equal to vorticity, you put nice coefficients there, uniform elliptic, and that 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 can be. So it's it's um it's I, I don't have examples of physical things otherwise. If you have tell us. Okay, thank thank you. You're welcome. Elena. Elena. Uh, hi, Jean-Luca. Nice to see you. Hello. Hi. Very, be very beautiful talk. Uh, I have several comments and questions. Uh, so first of all, it seems to me that the, the, the closest relative to your uniqueness proof is the Serfati proof for uniqueness. Aha. Uh -huh. Okay. Okay. It's very, very similar. And... Um, and when you mention Taniuchi, Taniuchi uses uh, the, the Littlewood Paley components. Okay, yes. So, so in particular, you, you use if you use the Serfati approach also for the existence, okay, then you could do it uh, in uh, even in bounded domains if you wanted. You don't uh, because I'm assuming that you're doing this on all of our two. Oh, this is not okay. So that's something on which I was not uh, was not. Uh, so this this uh, this holds in in uh, in our two holds on the. So in a certain sense, holds in every domain where the fundamental solution uh, of the Laplace and it has that properties. Uh, yes, yes. Nice so it's domains, very different. Fun, it's uh, very different from Taniuchi, because Taniuchi cannot yes, uh, do it. with his approach. He cannot do it in in domains with boundary. Okay. Absolutely. Uh, yes. Yeah, so that's the first, the first thing. And then you should be able to get rid of your L1 very easily. By Serfati, yes. Yes, that's using the, we, that's because you are using yes. the Serfati approach. Okay. Uh, the, my second okay. comment is that in particular, if, if I understood correctly okay, what, you're, what you're doing, uh, anything which is Lagrangian for Euler, uh, any solution which is Lagrangian for Euler and satisfies the mild growth assumption on theta, Mm -hmm. uh, you you would have uniqueness. That's correct. 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 Yes. In particular, you show in particular you show uniqueness for uh, physically realizable solutions for solutions which are obtained as limits of number stokes. Uh, yes, if you are in the right uh, if you are yeah. in the right integrability, yes. Um, Which you should be because you know you know that uh, you have uh, that any any physically realizable solution with vorticity in L one uh, is Lagrangian. Uh, I'm slightly lost because okay we we still need uh, so 
Yes, I mean, they are Lagrangian, but I, I'm basically so modulus, uh, modulus using uh, Di Perna Leon, uh, I also have for, for any weak solution. So I'm not, I'm doing a Lagrangian proof, uh, but for Euler per se, I'm not really using, uh, really the information that the solution is Lagrangian. So I start from a weak solution and then I use the Lagrangian rewriting of the, of the solution. Uh, so it's right. not like a selection. But in particular, but in okay. particular, if you know that the solution is Lagrangian, then you have the trajectories, you have everything. Correct. Uh, yes. So if you have, so if you have the right growth condition on the models of, of continuity on, on theta, I mean, mm -hmm. okay, then okay. This would be correct, but yeah. I am in a setting in which basically every weak solution is Lagrangian, right? So if I am in uh, in LP. So in particular, I mean, LP, P large. Yeah. Then every weak solution is Lagrangian. So right. uh, yes, so physically realizable, they are, they are Lagrangian, but- uh, uh, No, 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 because no. They're all Lagrangian. I, I thought that you were in a setting where you, for, for P large, you are uniformly locally LP. That doesn't mean it's, that every, uh, every solution is Lagrangian. Uh, You'd you have to have a global because, bound. Uh, Okay, maybe we can discuss this later. Yeah, we can discuss. Okay, so there can be an issue. Okay, your point is uh, the global bounds. Uh, uh, okay, mm -hmm. okay, I see your point. Uh, I see your point. Okay, so we don't have global LP for P large. That's true. And your point no. is, well, but the velocity is also bounded, right? So the velocity is in L infinity. So I don't expect uh, that uh, that uh, I cannot. Uh, prove Lagrangianity for LP log solutions, uh, where I can prove Lagrangianity for LP solutions globally, bounded velocity. So the velocity is in L infinity. Yeah, no, but my point is that, okay, okay the way you stated your theorem, which was L1 intersect uh, Yul, mm -hmm. for instance, okay? Then you, you, the only global bound that you would be assuming is L1, but that's enough to show that, uh, we, so that the uh, physically realizable solutions are Lagrangian. Correct. <laughs> okay. All right. Well, let's okay. Let's, let's, let's talk about this. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Uh, are there any more questions? Um, okay. Let's send it again. Thank you. And uh, now we have a, a coffee break on the gather now. Um, can talk much. And return at uh, 11.20. The, the link to the gather